Thanks for tuning in again. Today's topic are when doing thyroid hormone replacement, which formulations should I use in what circumstances? This is the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And if you want to learn all about the science-based information on this topic, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. Well, first and foremost, I want to talk about should you do tablets, soft gels, or liquids. Now, to start off, soft gels and liquids, namely soft gels though, have less contingency on gastric pH for absorption. What that means to you is if you have a patient and you have su suspected malabsorption in that patient, then liquids or soft gel formulations of thyroid hormone replacement would ideally be the option you want to go to. Would those patients who have had bariatric surgery or atrophic gastritis, in that situation, I'd opt on the side of getting soft gels more than liquids, although both are still better than tablet formulations. If you have a patient and you do suspect there is malabsorption, you can do what's called a T4 malabsorption test. In this test, patients are given their entire, their entire weekly estimated average of what they would take for thyroid hormone replacement. And this is a weight-based formula that clinicians typically use. You'd calculate based on their weight in kilograms and multiply it over seven days, and you'd give them that dose. What you would want to do now is measure their thyroid hormones at baseline, ideally earlier in the morning, and then measure their levels two hours later. And the studies have shown that patients who don't have malabsorption issues, on average, they absorb roughly, or their T4 levels, their thyroid hormone levels, increase roughly about 54%. Studies have shown that less absorption than 54%, you should suspect that the patient most likely does have some kind of underlying etiology contributing to some malabsorption issues. In this case, you would want to go and switch to soft gel or liquid instead of the tablet formulation. The next focus area is, do you want to do generic or do you want to do branded? Well, generic, generic uh, formulations may have roughly up to about 10% difference in the actual hormone concentration as compared to the branded. When you're dealing with doses that are 50 mics, 75 mics, whatever, 10% isn't a whole lot, so typically you can go to more of a generic version and still not have too much variation. But once you get to like 100, 112, 125 mics, 10% is quite a bit different. 100 mics plus, 200 mics plus, I mean, that makes up a, a, a greater influence on the patient's thyroid hormone levels, whereas if you have somebody on 25 mics, a 10% variation isn't too much. Uh, next area we want to go to is... Do you want to do T4 or combination therapy? If you do T4 only, the dosing schedule is relatively easy. You take one pill, first thing in the morning, empty belly with a cup of water. Or as an alternative, if you're doing T4 only, you could do it right before your bed. Just make sure you haven't eaten in ideally two hours. The benefit of this is that it's long acting, it's easy dosing schedule, and the patients typically have more stable therapeutic levels. The cons of this are that not all patients can deiodinate the T4 in peripheral tissues to form T3 adequately. So some patients may not convert as effectively, thus their T3 levels still may not hit those therapeutic levels that ideally we would like to see for symptom resolution. And combination therapy, this would be like a T4 or T3 combination, like a, like a Westeroid or mp Thyroid, Armor, or a compounded uh, formulation that carries both thyroid hormones. That's the next alternative. So some studies have actually shown that patients that suffer from cognitive well-being not being properly managed on T4 only actually have increases in psychomo psychological, psychomotor performance and cognitive recall a lot better than patients who are on T4 only. Uh, studies that even show that T3 can, to the addition of T4 often helps resolve even uh, major depressive-like symptoms. That's why psychiatrists historically have used T3 as an adjunct to what we refer to as treatment refractory 
Major Depression Disorder, or MDD. That's all for today, folks. I know it's a little bit. We'll talk more in a follow-up. Again, I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, do this next. Click on one of these thumbnails to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization. Thanks.